Hey folks, Army Pilot here uh, to show you my latest acquisition and uh, excited about these cast iron pans, these skillets from Lodge. And uh, I'm doing this video specifically for a friend of mine. Her name is Alicia. Uh, she bought some Lodge pans as well, and I was telling her about uh, reseasoning these pans in accordance with uh, one of the guys on the internet. He goes by the name a Culinary Fanatic. So look him up. I'll try to put a link at the end on what he does to strip the original seasoning off of his pans and restart new the way he does it. And I did it uh, exactly the way he talked about. This is literally will be the second time I have ever cooked anything in these pans. And I, like I said, I cooked these eggs this morning and I was bragging to Alicia about it. And she said, well, make a video. Show me what you did. So uh, first off, let me tell you that these are the ProLogic pans, uh, skillets, and I pulled up uh, I pulled up Amazon to show you where I got them. You can see it says Logic, uh, a Lodge ProLogic 12-inch skillet. Uh, I've also got the 12-inch that they also show. They're showing they're out of stock right now. Uh, pretty popular items. I also, while I was at it, bought the uh, ProLogic Wok. And uh, you know what's uh, what's interesting is they don't show it on Amazon. Uh, because I, I thought I needed to get a wok ring for it, but look at the bottom of this. It's flat, so it sits right on the stovetop. No rock, wok ring needed. I also want you, to, want you to see how dark it is. It's as dark as my original lodge pan. And you can see the big differences between this, this lodge pan that you can still get with the flat sides versus these chef style uh, Pro Logic with the curved bottom. Again, this is my 12 inch pan, 12, uh, 12 uh, inch pan, and my 10 inch pan. Now, what I what I did uh, uh, went right by the instructions that the culinary fanatic talks about. I, I put it into the oven in the cleaning mode. Uh, I only did it for about an hour. Uh, the oven was pretty hot, and it basically strips off everything. Then he also talks about another method for using oven cleaner and I actually uh, used oven cleaner as well just to get everything off of it be careful wear gloves if you're gonna do that and then he talks about taking a drill with a wire brush and and uh, cleaning this out uh, cleaning off all of that uh, the little high spots and, and um, uh, getting it a little smoother it doesn't really you don't really care or need to get it smooth you can kinda see that there's actually a little bit of it looks like orange peel I think that actually helps uh, to uh, uh, to keep the pans uh, fairly non-stick, but it, I think it works both ways, whatever you like. But let me show you now also, what I did that he didn't talk about was I used a file to go along the sides all the way around the thing, uh, the handles that went inside here where all of those casting marks were, and then uh, I took a um, I took a half or a round file and did the same thing to all these edges, little holes, all these round spots here, both sides. File those down, and because I didn't have um, I didn't have a, a drill with that wire brush, I simply used a really heavy um, sandpaper, and it worked fine. It probably took me I probably worked in each of these pans uh, for a good eh, 25 or 30 minutes. You know, just sanding it all down. I wanted this all to be nice and smooth, uh, no marks, and uh, it works great. So. This is literally uh, the second time I'm ever going to use this pan, uh, or I have used this pan, excuse me. And let me show you also that I've got the pan, it's between low and medium, maybe just a little closer to medium. Uh, you don't necessarily have to get the pan really, really hot, but you want it hot enough that, uh, uh, that it, it cooks quickly without uh, uh, causing, uh, causing any warping. Um, and let me show you what I do is I just check it with just a little bit of water, and you can see that's that's nice and hot uh, but again not too hot then what I do there's another guy on the internet that talks about the dissimilar oils it's, it gets very much into the scientific method he talks about what he does uh, to his pans and first he, he says he puts a little bit of olive oil in there so that's what I did I put some olive oil in there and just wipe that around okay you can see a little bit of smoke from that and then uh, you can use anything after that any other different oil and in this case, uh, I actually have some bacon grease that I like to use. You can use butter. You can use 
whatever you like. But I'm simply going to put a little bit of bacon grease in there. And, excuse the noise. And uh, I'm going to add some salt. One of the guys on the internet does that as well. And a little bit of pepper. And then I've already got my scrambled eggs ready. So I'm just going to dump that in there. Okay. Just kind of let that cook. Well, one of the first things you're going to notice is how easily, and I'm confident it'll do this, is how easily it starts to push away. Look at this. This is not a Teflon pan, folks. Virtually non-stick. Now what I'm going to do, as you're going to see, it's, it's almost going to be difficult to get under this. And I'm just going to not to make too much noise here for you. One of the other things you'll notice is I'm using a mitt. The negative about these cast iron pans is that they do get hot. The handles get hot. Both sides get hot. And, uh, my gosh, that's about it. So let me go ahead and just literally, I'm going to dump this into this other pan. And let me show you how easy it is to prepare it for the next use. That's it. It's ready to go. So if you like that, uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, uh, just ask and I'll, uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Until then, Army Pilot out.